Well, good evening, everybody. Um, I hope you can all hear me, and I apologize for the delay. We are here uh, tonight for the special, special city council meeting. I will call the meeting to order at 6.15 p.m. Um, I'll skip over the uh, general discussion of meeting logistics, except to point out that this we will have a public hearing on the proposed uh, just cause eviction proposal. I would hope that uh, uh, if there are uh, public comments, I would not necessarily hold people to the normal three minute timeline, but I would like everybody to be conscious of the time and not talk too long. Um, first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is everybody satisfied with the agenda? Everybody saying yes. The agenda is approved. The next item on the agenda is general business and appearances. This is an opportunity for any member of the public to uh, address the council about any uh, topic that is not on tonight's agenda. I will uh, pause briefly to see if anyone uh, is interested in being uh, recognized either here in the room or uh, participating by Zoom. Okay, not seeing anyone on the, uh, uh, seeking to be recognized, we will move to the public hearing for the petition charter change. This is uh, a requirement for uh, for an item that's a uh, charter change that's been placed on the uh, ballot by petition. The uh, item is, has already been approved by the council to be on the ballot, and so it will be on the March 5th ballot. We are required to have this, our second public hearing, within 10 days of the first public hearing, which was last Wednesday. And uh, we will have a presentation um, hopefully briefer than the previous presentation because we've already been through it uh, one time. Um, and then we will uh, have an opportunity for members of the public to comment. And with that, I will open the public hearing. Why don't you come on up and sit at the chair there? Oh, thank you. Is there any way to be able to present or is... Yeah, no, try to share your screen. I'm, uh, I'm winging this. But how hard can it be? I'm not actually connected to the Zoom yet. Right, but I would share my screen, I think. Yeah. No, I don't want to share my well, screen. It says you to allow multiples. Oh. oh. See, it's really simple, Chuck. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Oh, my gosh. So if I... If I uh, join the Zoom, would I be able to share my screen? You need yes, to join the Zoom. Yeah. Excellent. Give me a second, then I'll. Um... That's the way to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Sorry about this. I just got. Pardon. It's okay, meeting. Right. It's, right. it's anyways. Wish I could turn it off and go in. Uh, <laughs> trying to find the Zoom meeting link. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, Tom, I see you're logged in. I am. If you, yep, I've got share screen capabilities. I'm just getting this up.
Okay. Right. All right, you're on. Need to move a few things around. So good evening, Montpelier. Thank you so much for attending this public information meeting on just cause eviction. A charter change proposal that will be question 14 on the Montpelier Town Meeting Day ballot. My name is Tom Proxer, and I'm the housing justice organizer for Rights and Democracy. At RAD, we have successfully organized tenants, uh, homeowners, and landlords in Burlington, Winooski, Essex, and Brattleboro, and now Montpelier to place a robust, sensible just cause eviction charter change on town meeting day ballots over the last three years. Tonight, I will be going through specific text that will be on your ballots this town meeting day and explaining what each portion means. Following that, Montpelier resident um, and just cause eviction activist Beth Burgess will do a short presentation on why we need this policy and the implications for Montpelier. Finally, we'll open the meeting up for a Q&A. Uh, if you do have any questions during the presentation, if you could write them down and hold on to them for the Q&A section, that, that would be most appreciated. Could you close the window so I wouldn't see the pictures? You know, oh, yes, I can. You can just make that arrow, that slit. Um, you see across the top there? Yeah. Yeah, hit that one. Ah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so to best understand this question and its implications, it will be helpful to go through the language that will be on the ballot. So this will be the first uh, part of the, the, the language on the ballot. Um, shall the Charter of the City of Montpelier, as amended, be further amended to, give, amended to give the City Council the power to provide, by ordinance, protections for residential tenants from evictions without, quote, just cause by adopting and adding a new section 301B9 to read? So um, this is asking if you, the voter, agree or disagree that the City Council should be given the authority to create a just cause eviction ordinance in Montpelier. So a lot of words for not really saying are very much. Uh, this is the next section. Um, so uh, to provide by ordinance protections for residential tenants as defined in Chapter 137, Title 9 of the Vermont Statutes Annotated, so this is the section uh, of Vermont statutes that pertain to renter tenant agreements. Um, so from eviction without just cause, where just cause shall include, but it's not limited to. Uh, so let's take these one by one. A tenant's material breach of written rental agreement. So these are the, the, the things that you can get evicted for. So um, a tenant material breach of a written rental agreement is, for example, if the lease says there is no smoking allowed on the property and the Excuse tenant... Me, Tom, could you pause for a moment? Yes. I think somebody, we're getting feedback. I think somebody's laptop is, microphone is on. So I would ask whoever it is. Are we set now? You're unmuted. I am. Yeah. 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 So these are the four reasons why one can get evicted under just cause eviction ordinances. So the first one is tenant's material breach of a written rental agreement. So for example, if your lease says that there is no smoking allowed on the property and the tenant ignores that rule, that would be a violation of the written rental agreement and grounds for eviction. The landlord will get to decide what rules are in the lease at the beginning of each new lease cycle, and it would be within their rights to change these rules as they saw fit at that time. Second reason uh, someone can get evicted, a tenant's violation of state statutes regulating tenant obligations in residential rental agreements. Now, this is actually quite a very long list of reasons why one can get evicted. These are state statutes on rental agreements uh, and tenant obligations and landlord obligations. Uh, so some examples, for example, is being abusive to your roommates or people that live within the neighborhood around you or defacing the property. Uh, these are all grounds for eviction. Uh, Non-payment of rent. So if you, your tenant does not pay rent within 14 days of the agreed upon date, uh, that is fair grounds for eviction. 
and a te tenant's failure to accept written, reasonable, good faith renewal terms. At the end of each lease cycle, if the current tenants have stuck to the rules, paid their rent on time, um, have been a good tenant, they, they will get the right of first refusal on a new lease. However, the lease does not have to be identical to the lease agreed on in the previous cycle. The landlord is free to change the lease as they see fit. If the tenant does not wish to sign this amended lease, they have forfeited the right of first refusal and the landlord is free to offer this lease to any other interested parties. In short, a failure to accept a new lease would be grounds for eviction if the tenant chose to stay in the home without signing a new lease. All right, let's get to the next section. So next part says, such ordinance shall exclude from just cause the expiration of a rental agreement as sole grounds for termination of tenancy. In addition to the exemptions in Chapter 137 of Title IX, the ordinance shall exempt from this provision subject to mitigation provisions, sublets and in-unit rentals, as well as the following properties, but not limited to. So this section outlines which properties would be exempt from a just cause ordinance created by the Montpelier City Council and that a lease expiration would not be grounds for eviction. So as I said before, at the end of each lease cycle, the current tenants get the right of, first, uh, of renewal on any, any new lease, so that kind of outlines that. Um, and so, yeah, after this section, it will outline uh, what properties are gonna be exempt from any just cause eviction rules. So, so first one, owner-occupied duplexes and triplexes i.e. if you own a property and rent out a room or it's a duplex or a triplex and you rent the other units you'd be exempt from a just cause eviction ordinance landlords who live on the property they rent to get a dispensation this clause allows landlords to evict who they please whenever they wish for whatever reason so long as they live on the property uh, two those being withdrawn from the rental market including properties to be occupied by the owner or an immediate family member as primary residence uh, this clause allows landlords to remove the house from the property market whenever they wish to do so. If they no longer want to rent the property privately, they are under no obligation to do so and therefore can evict tenants without a cause if they take that action. Uh, number three, accessory dwelling units on the same property as a single family, owner-occupied home. Um, so again, this is kind of like the owner-occupied up to a duplex and triplex. If uh, your landlord rents out their ADU, which is on the property boundary, uh, that ADU is not grounds for just cause eviction ordinance. It gets excluded. And those in need of substantial renovations that preclude occupancy. So for similar reasons to withdrawing the property from the rental market, if the home needs renovations and the renovations are needed are so extensive that it requires the tenant to leave, say, for example, you need to get a new roof or I don't know, a wall collapses, something major, a landlord's going to evict those tenants without a cause because obviously the, the home is unfit for habitation. All right, next part. Um, so such ordinance shall conclude provisions that one, mitigate potential negative impacts on tenants and property owners, including but not limited to requirements of adequate notice and reasonable relocation expenses. So this says if the landlord were to remove a tenant without a cause, i.e. a family member moves in or there needs to be substantial renovations made, um, so a no-fault no eviction effectively, then the tenants would, should get adequate notice of that eviction and some moving expenses paid. How long the notice should be and how much the moving expenses would be would be up to the city council to decide. Um, when we put this through the state house on the Burlington charter change, they said it's up to a month's rent. And this is just an acknowledgement of the fact we've got such a small uh, rental availability rate right now. It takes a long time to find a new place and obviously it costs a lot of money to, to move. I don't know who moved here last. I've moved in the last year and a half. It, it costs money every single time. Um, so number two, provide for a reasonable probationary period after initial occupancy. So this clause allows the landlord to put a probationary period on any new tenant that occupies a house in which they would still be allowed to evict without a cause. This is to allow the landlord some time to assess whether this tenant is likely going to be an issue, and if so, can evict them without cause before that probationary period is over after which just cause provisions would kick in. How long this probationary period would be, again, would be up to the city council to decide when they write the ordinance. 
Number three, limit unreasonable rent increases to prevent de facto evictions or non-renewals. Although this shall not be construed to limit rents beyond the purpose of preventing individual evictions. So this rule would prevent landlords from raising the rent to a point where it would effectively be an eviction. For example, if your rent is $1,000 a month, you should be so lucky, um, and your landlord were to raise it 100% to $2,000 per month, that would be seen as an, that could, could be seen as an unreasonable rent increase designed to evict without going through the proper channels. It effectively closes, or this clause closes an eviction loophole but by design is not meant to stop the landlord from raising the rent. By what percent would be deemed unreasonable rent increase, again, would be a decision for the city council to decide. And last but not least, this is the last section of the chart um, of the charter question. It outlines that terms such as reasonable and adequate notice shall be defined by the city council when they write the ordinance. Uh, it also states that if this charter change were to pass and an ordinance was created, landlords would have to inform the tenants of their rights when they sign their lease agreement. Uh, this is a long process. Once we pass this on the charter change, it has to go through the, to uh, the State House. The State House then have to approve it. Then it comes back to the City Council, and only then have the City Council got the authority to write the ordinance. So it's a marathon and not a sprint. Um, so we're a long way off yet. But once that does happen, it will be up to the City Council to define things like what's reasonable, what's adequate notice. Um, I just want to say, I uh, said this last week at the City Council meeting, but to be clear, this charter change, if it passes, is not a silver bullet to fix the housing crisis. To do that, we need to build more housing, dissuade second and third homeowners from leaving their properties empty, regulate the short-term rental property market like Airbnbs, and create a statewide rental registry so we can understand the true extent of what's happening to housing in Vermont. Uh, things like grants for first-time home buyers and rental assistance for those trying to get off the streets are also very important and much-needed policies to, to curb this housing crisis. What this charter change will do is protect good tenants from bad landlords, landlords who neglect their properties and punish tenants making reasonable complaints, landlords who are competing against and undercutting good landlords that look after their homes and their tenants. These good landlords spend money to make sure their homes are secure, safe, warm and dry. The bad landlords do not, safe in the knowledge that if a tenant complains, they can be replaced. This policy will also protect those good landlords from bad tenants. Tenants that don't pay their rent, tenants that destroy property, tenants that threaten their neighbours and community members. Those tenants will be no safer from eviction than they currently are. In fact, by removing no cause as an option for landlords looking to rid themselves of tenants, we will free up the housing courts slightly, allowing for just and reasonable eviction cases to move quicker through the courts, allowing landlords to rid themselves of problematic tenants all the faster. We need to create safe and secure housing for everyone in Vermont. And while this may not get us to our goal, it does take us a step closer. If you share this vision of a safe affair in Montpelier, I urge you to vote, uh, to vote yes on question 14 at this town meeting day and become the fourth municipality in Vermont to become a Just Cause Eviction town. Thank you and we shall now hear from Montpelier resident and Just Cause Eviction activist Beth Burgess. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Thank you. Check. Are we adjusting the other meeting? We're four minutes into this. Yeah, I didn't know how long you could allow. Um, um, a note, a note for people who are here for the Board of Abatement uh, meeting. We uh, had anticipated that the City Council public hearing would be done uh, by 6.30. Because of technical issues, we didn't get uh, started in time. And so we're, uh, we're running over. And I think this is a public hearing. It's uh, something that's provided by, uh, by law to do. And so we're going to complete the public hearing, and then we'll do the uh, Board of Abatement hearing after that. So, sorry to keep people waiting, but do we, anyone who's here for the, public, for the uh, abatement request, we will definitely get to you. And as I say, I apologize for not starting already. This will not take long. And before you start, Chris Lumber, if you're listening, would you please uh, mute your microphone on your computer?
to the slide. Okay. Are you ready to start? Yeah, I'm just uh, going to the slideshow. Thanks, Chris. So this is kind of a one on 101. Uh, it was created as a kind of a. I'm going to ask you to start by introducing yourself. Of course. I'm Beth Burgess. I'm a resident of Montpelier. Um, I became involved in this group. I am a landlord. I rent out the top floor of my house, so I'm a very small scale landlord, but I, I felt that this was a really good cause. And this is a short presentation based on something I did in grad school. So it, it, the first is aimed at more of a um, national audience and then narrows down to Montpelier. So this uh, was started earlier last year when moratoriums had ended against eviction. There were rent hikes that were seen during the pandemic. The um, federally funded rental assistance had ended. Transitional housing for uh, people needing emergency shelter was ending at that time. Far more people of color were affected nationally in this situation and Nationwide, there's a low vacancy rate, and certainly in Vermont, there's a very low vacancy rate. This is just showing the difference between people of color on the left and white people, um, the greater effect on people of color. So in looking at the research on health effects based on eviction or the fear of eviction, there has been documented research of health problems, a greater risk of more serious health problems or mortality, trauma and mental health issues. The effects can be long lasting. It affects children as well as adults. Um, we know that eviction can lead to homelessness at times. People who are evicted can have this appear on their rental record, and it can go on the record and stay there even if the case was dismissed, if there was a settlement and the rent was paid. Um, some people may be unable to get a subsidy if they've been evicted. So this is kind of looking at it um, nationwide. No cause evictions are legal in most states. No reason is needed. It can be in retaliation for, in some states, what is illegal, like sexual harassment, complaints about racist, sexist behavior on the part of the landlord or other tenants, and complaining about needed repairs. At times, greatly increased rent, as Tom was mentioning, can be cause for eviction, essentially, because the person can no longer pay if it's doubled. There's also what's known as informal evictions. This is something that's been documented more recently nationwide. These are not recorded. You can't estimate it. Um, they're seen to be as up to five times as common as court-ordered evictions. Um, a lot of it is prompted by, as you see this graphic here, the notice to quit. So just uh, before someone is even given um, an order of eviction, there's just the fear of eviction appearing on the rental record. People may just leave at the hint of a possible eviction. Some people lack knowledge about their rights and may just want to get out of a situation. And then immigrants and people who don't speak English as a primary language um, may be confused and may end up leaving. In Vermont, um, the data is as recent as 2021. I don't have the most recent data, so it may be um, declined somewhat since then, but 
Looking back in 2017, 18% of evictions were related to no cause. That same year, 70% were related to non-payment of rent. By 2021, 50% were without a reason for eviction. On the right, you see low rates, rural differences. So before the pandemic, there was a basic statistic of 2.3 per 100 units, that rate of eviction. During the pandemic, it went down because of eviction moratoriums. But they found that non-metro areas, because they're looking at big census areas, non-metro areas, which include rural areas, had higher rates. So just summing up, just cause eviction protects tenants who are in a, a difficult situation. They don't have heat, or there's leaking into their apartment, or there are other problems with the apartment and this would give them a chance without retaliation. Landlords must give one of the approved causes, and our old competitor, New Hampshire, already has just cause eviction, and there are th four other states that do, cities, major cities in some states, and three cities or towns in Vermont do have just cause eviction. So. The following causes are allowed violation of terms of lease and um, state law, property damage, criminal activity, unsafe and dangerous conditions of an apartment caused by the tenant, engaging in threatening behavior towards other tenants or that disturbs the environment. And there are exceptions for owner-occupied buildings with three or fewer units an intent to do a major renovation or rehab, <coughs> or the owner moving in to want to occupy the building fully. These are some things that are part of some just cause eviction uh, ballot measures. Uh, Tom already mentioned a cap on rent hikes to be determined by the city council, what the mechanism will be for determining that. And it doesn't apply to rentals where tenants do not plan to continue to stay. So the rent could go way up for the new tenants arriving. Some states also offer mediation, um, which needs to be funded by a nonprofit or state funding most likely. They've found in research that it can save landlords who would pay up to $10,000 for eviction and tenants are saved from court costs. They've also found that two-thirds to nine-tenths of tenants using mediation avoided eviction. And most property owners who are represented in court by an attorney, but most tenants do not have an attorney. Our US Constitution guarantees the right to a free attorney for criminal cases, but not for civil cases. So the opposition um, claims that this creates rent control, limits property owners' rights, limits investments in quality housing, prevents landlords from evicting bad tenants, or creates the potential for perpetual tenancy. It does not do that. It does not create rent control, which caps rents across the board everywhere. This is only in limited circumstances. It does not limit what a property owner, if they want to renovate, if they want to move back in, if they want to get rid of a bad tenant, they still have that as a just cause. That does not change with just cause eviction. It allows the eviction of tenants, as Tom mentioned, for trashing an apartment and all the reasons that most people would think of would be a cause for eviction and it exempts many properties. So again, this reduces eviction. It helps enhance housing and neighborhood stability. It saves money for both the landlord and the tenants from having to go through a court uh, process. It prevents related stress and health issues and gives tenants the freedom to complain about lack of heat 
and need for repairs. And that's my presentation. All right. Thank you. Um, this being a public hearing, there's opportunity for members of the public to comment. I'll start by seeing if there's anyone in the room who would like to comment. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone raise their hand, so I'm going to see if there's anyone participating by Zoom who, uh, who would like to comment. I, oh, uh, could, could you please unshare? Yes, I okay. just realized I didn't do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'll ask now if there's anyone who's participating by Zoom who would like to be heard. Indicated, preferably by activating the raise hand feature, but because uh, that is the easiest way for me to see it. Uh, Daphne Kinney Landis. Hi, yeah, my name is Daphne Kinney Landis. I live on uh, State Street in Montpelier and have lived in Montpelier for about um eight years now and uh just want to voice my support for this ballot measure um especially to beth's last point in her presentation about communication and being able to voice concerns um that definitely is something i've experienced as a tenant uh the anxiety around voicing those concerns to landlords and to um someone else's point in last week's um, meeting about just the power disparities between landlords and tenants, I think this kind of ballot measure will really open up channels of communication so that tenants can share about concerns around whether it's heating not working, whether it's in the aftermath of flooding, which is what I experienced, um, just being able to feel like you could voice concerns about the habitability and safety of your dwelling without um, any kind of negative consequences in terms of uh, lease renewals. So yeah, that, that's all. Okay, thank you. Anybody else participating by Zoom who'd like to uh, comment, please uh, raise your hand electronically. Yes, come on up. What's the purpose of the lease? Okay, let's, could oh, we sorry, start by having you identify me. yourself? Um, I'm Lisa edson and I'm not here for this at all. Okay. But what's the purpose of the lease? If we have a lease with a tenant, and there's, uh, how does that work if a lease comes to an end? That's that one. I think we yeah. have an answer to that. Yeah, uh, so at least it's still a contract. Tom, Tom. You have to be in this. I'm sorry. So you can be picked up near a mic. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Lisa. Lisa, Tom, nice to meet you. Hi. Uh, yeah, so a lease is still very much legal, legal binding contract. That lease will go on for as long as it says the lease will go on for, so let's uh, say for a year long lease. And in the lease, it will still have the list of expectations that the landlord has on the tenant. So it might be like no pets or no smoking or, you know, make sure you put the bins out at this, this day, that kind of thing. Um, at the end of that lease, the landlord will be required to give a new lease to the current tenant so long as that tenant didn't break any rules. So as long as they, because that's kind of the clause in just cause eviction, because if they don't offer a new lease, um, that's effectively an eviction for that tenant because we've got very, very few houses available um, to, to rent. So if you don't get a lease renewal, even if you've done nothing wrong, what that means is you might still have to move town or even move state. And in some circumstances, uh, you might end up finding yourself homeless. And you've actually done nothing to deserve that. You've paid your rent on time. You've looked after the property. And if the landlord is still going to rent the property out, if he's still going to use that property as a business um, and you've done nothing wrong, what this, this charter change would do is, is say that that tenant deserves to be able to stay in that place. Yeah, but when you have a lease, it has a specific time period. And the obligation is for both parties for that time period. Uh -huh. So why would this automatically extend that time period? It wouldn't if you were a business. It, it doesn't. It, it says that any new lease 
that tenant gets the right of first refusal in a new lease. So once that lease expires, that lease expires. But if the landlord is planning to rent out the property again, that current tenant gets the right of first refusal on that new lease. So then you would have another lease that again would have an expiration date. And that landlord can change that lease at the end of the at the end of the lease, you know, expiration expiring, and a landlord has another lease and, and planning to rent out again. They can change all the stipulations. If they now all of a sudden don't want pets or all of a sudden they want the bins to be out on a different day or you know, anything reasonable that a landlord could require, they can change that lease within those, those specifications. They can even re increase the cost of rent. Uh, and it's up to the, the tenant to, to say if they want to re-sign this new amended lease or not. If they say no, the, well, the tenant has to leave. But that tenant does get the right of first refusal on that lease, on that new lease. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for thank coming. you for the question. Is there anybody else on Zoom who uh, hasn't been heard, who would like to be heard? Indicate by raising your hand. And is there anything here in the room who hasn't been heard who'd like to be heard? All right. Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Um, no action by the council is required other than the fact that we conducted the public hearing. On our agenda, we have a slot for other business. I believe we have no other business uh, to conduct. Um, city council reports, <laughs> does anybody want to give a report? Move to adjourn. Um, Second. There's uh, no mayor's report. City clerk, do you have a report? <laughs> All right, we, we are adjourned at 6.52 p.m. Uh, all right. Thank you to everyone who uh, came to the uh, 